everybody. In this video I'm going to show you about the features on a Sears Kenmore 9000 series sewing machine from the 1960s. I have discussed in the past videos only a couple of things, but today we're going to take a look at all of the controls, name them, and let you know exactly what they do. We're going to first start at the top of the machine. This one is called the pressure foot control regulator. This controls the amount of pressure that your pressure foot exerts on your fabric to keep it moving through the machine. The higher the number on the knob, the more pressure that's going to be exerted on the fabric or project that you're trying to stitch together. The purpose of the pressure foot is to make sure that the machine has the proper amount of stitches per inch and believe it or not it will skip a stitch if you don't have the proper amount of pressure on it for example if you have like a medium weight fabric and you're feeding it through this number up here should be at a five or six if you're sewing multiple fabrics together or it's a heavier material you'll want the pressure on this feet on the feed dogs to be less somewhere between oh I don't know three or one now there is a condition that will occur if you don't have this dialed in properly and if you have marks on your material such as you know feed dog marks or you get bunching or it doesn't just doesn't sit right or there's marks showing up from the pressure foot itself um you need to back down the amount of ex pressure exerted on the fabric with the feed dogs and like i said you want your fabric to look nice you don't want it to look like it's all marred up the next knob that we're going to talk about is the stitch expander. This knob regulates the length of the automatic decorative patterns. I'm going to talk about this in another video. I'm not going to really discuss it now because it has a lot to do with the cams that are placed in this area here to do decorative stitching. But I will tell you basically what it does. What it does is, first of all, it controls the amount of stitching involved with each one of the decorative stitches that were that you could possibly use. Now to use this knob, you always have to turn it clockwise. That means always towards the right. Um, it won't allow you to turn it this way because it just it just it, it's not designed to do that. Now position number one, as you can see right here, is the original decorative stitching setting. If you move it clockwise to position number two, this makes the pattern double length without any change in the stitch length, which is if you've got a pretty long project that you're using a decorative stitch on, that's the one you're gonna really need. But today we're just gonna leave it on one. It doesn't get involved unless you're using the cams. The next knob we're going to talk about is the stitch with control knob. And as you can see, there is a little window right over here that is numbered zero to four. Now for your straight, straight stitch, you're always going to have it on zero. One through four are the stitches that are used for zigzag. Now to operate this button, you must push this in and turn it to the, to the size width on the zigzag that you want. I have made a example of what the stitches look like. Now this stitch right here is zero. That's your straight stitch. This one is number one. It is a small zigzag. This is number two. 
number three. And this final one is your number four. These are the stitches that your machine will handle. And it's pretty obvious. You'll use whatever you need, you need in each one of the cases that you're using for zigzag. But that's basically what they look like. Now, let's move this back to one. And one of the nice features is, is you have to push it in, turn it to the desired zigzag that you want, and then you release it. It'll pop into place, and this will not move. It is a safety mechanism for the machine. This next button, or knob, is the needle position control knob. It has an R, a C for center, and an L. These are offsets for your needle. It'll only move a small amount of positions, so it's just barely negligible. As you can see, I just moved it there. That's to the left, and then I'm going to bring it back to the center. And when I turn it to the counterclockwise, to the R, it moves the needle position to the right. Now, this knob has one more setting, and that is a R. Oh, yeah, here we are. A R. Let me explain about this knob, this position on this knob. This is used when you're doing the decorative patterns. The AR position of the needle can sew the automatic reverse stitches using one of the 10 AR patterns on the cams. 21 through 30 are those that you're going to be using if you're using decorative patterns. It is important for this to be in that position in order for you to use the patterns and the cams that go up in here. Now, a lot of you are thinking, well, yeah, the machines that they have nowadays, oh yeah, they, they have, you can move the needle so many positions to the left, or you can move it so many positions to the right. That is just the selling tool. Actually, to be really honest with you, you only need three. Um, if you need something more than that, uh, that's up to you. But personally, I like these machines. Three's all you're ever going to use, so that's why I use this machine. Now, the next knob that we're going to look at is right here. This is the stitch length control knob. This knob helps you to regulate the length of stitch that you want during sewing. It is numbered zero through four. The fourth number, number four, will give you the longest stitch. The size of the stitch you select will depend on the fabric that you are sewing. Now, a lot of people are probably looking at it. Well, you know, hello, you know, you're you got you're you're just stitching fabric together. Well, no, actually, it's kind of important. The standard stitch length for any machine, this one or any other machine that you're running, is 8 to 10 stitches per inch. If you want a basting stitch, it would be 4 to 5 stitches per inch. Stay stitching, which we'll talk about stay stitching at a later time, should be anywhere from 8 to 12 stitches per inch. Now, people are thinking, well, you know, why do you need this? Well, let me explain something. This is kind of important, too, because you can quilt on this machine. Yeah, don't let anybody kid you. It can be done. There's a couple things that you have to do. But if you want to quilt on this machine or any other machine, you're going to have to have anywhere from 16 to 18 stitches per inch. That's where this comes in. The smaller the number, the smaller the stitch. So 
I don't know, for quilting, you would probably want it anywhere from zero to maybe two. Now this next knob right here is not really a knob. It is the reverse control button. You press this in just like this. And when you want to reverse your stitch on your machine. Now, <clears throat> this is usually operated while the machine is running. I'm not going to do it for you right now because I can't hold the camera and show you at the same time at this point in time. But this is basically, I did this kind of freehand. I didn't control the, the stitching, but it basically, it reverses it, your machine runs the fabric in this way and what it does is it forces the feed dogs to bring it back towards you and it it's used as an anchoring tool usually at the beginning of a stitch when you're starting out on stitching or at the end of the stitch to anchor the thread in the material so that all you have to do is snip it off and call it a day now the very next button knob that you want to talk about which really isn't a knob it's kind of like a toggle switch if you can see there is a u here and that is for up and what does it control the feed dogs yes if you push you toggle this to the right it takes your feed dogs out of the picture so that you can Move your material around other than going straight back in during your stitching. This allows you to go in and move your uh, fabric around just like that in any direction that you want to. This is used when you're quilting. I talked about that a little bit earlier. And that's one of the things that you'll need if you decide that you want to quilt on this machine. Now, as you can see, the feed dogs are out of the way. I'm going to put them back into play. And if you take your fingers and you rub them over the feed dogs, they kind of like feel like a file. That's used, that's because they want to grip the material to move it towards the back to keep you sewing in the proper amount of stitches. Now, let's move to the right side of the machine. This is your hand feed. This one is the wheel that you use when your machine kind of bogs down once in a while or you want to place the needle into the fabric before you start sewing at a particular point. That's what we use this for. Now this last one is the clutch control. Now this one right here, oops, sorry. This one right here will release the clutch. What that does is when you are going to fill your bobbin, it takes your sewing machine needle right here out of play. It won't allow the machine to make the machine, the needle go up and down. It removes that out of the way so that you can fill your bobbin. Well, that's it for my video today. I hope you learned a little bit about this machine and its capabilities. Um, like I said before in past videos, this is a workhorse as far as machines. These are excellent machines. They're made of metal. And I can't speak more highly of these machines. Yes, the newer machines are nice, but 95% of the time they're made out of plastic. I don't like plastic. So, well, that's it for my video. My intention is to help someone using this type of sewing machine and explaining each of the controls in a way that is understand by everyone. So have a nice day, and as always, happy sewing.